关注开卖相识公众号。坐别鼓掌，哎，谈大不通大，排便费力憋得慌。排便量少，堵得慌；排便时间长，胀得慌。这是经常便秘，任君相担轻啊！一坐一夜起黄旗，别让老便秘拖累好身体。相担轻牌科研胶囊，经常便秘，任君相担轻。装我去嘛，这三条女好猛了噶！呢个头发中就劈云又变黄。呢个重点啊，首先快到年轻人得得见水啊！明白，都系佢，成个场都话晒事啊！望够未啊？系咪仲望啊？唔使拣啦，就呢盒咯，啲货啊啱啱落机，好新鲜噶，试下。我班中的江湖大嫂，晚九点半，比出台。As drunken men snatch his gun and opens fire. Cabbies threaten to paralyze Central if providers like Uber aren't shut down. And the diplomatic row between Britain and Russia worsens. Good evening. A domestic dispute in Sha Tin ended this morning with shots fired. Two policemen were injured after a 30-year-old man snatched one officer's gun and opened fire. There are concerns tonight the suspect was able to grab a police gun so easily. Officers rushed to the scene after gunshots were fired. One of the injured cops was taken away on a stretcher. It was the same for the wounded suspect as he left Kuomlam Court in Shantin. Drama unfolded when authorities arrived on the 19th floor of Maolem House to handle a domestic dispute, reportedly an argument between a mother and her son. As police tried to control a heavily drunk man, he snatched an officer's gun and fired three times. Gunshots sparked concerns from residents in the same building, not just because of frequent arguments from that unit, but also how easy it was to take a gun from an officer. What if the suspect ran to other floors with a gun? asked this man. Commissioner of Police Stephen Lowe was asked why police guns could be snatched so easily. He only said he would review the case thoroughly. How often are officers trained to protect the weapons? Every season, according to Lee Jim On, who heads the Hong Kong Police Inspectors Association. They are uh, very frequently trained on uh, how to uh, fire and how to protect uh, his uh, firearm. However, if the situation is, say, not with uh, the normal patrolling uh, position, then maybe the police can uh, draw some conclusion from this uh, current incident to enhance the training. As for the two injured officers, one was shot in his right hand and leg, while the other was scratched by a bullet. Both remain in stable condition. Taxi drivers are threatening to paralyze traffic in Central. That's if no action is taken against unlicensed service providers like Uber. As Caleb Long reports, Cabby staged a protest to put pressure on officials. Kick Uber out of Hong Kong. That's what this alliance of taxi groups demanded this morning outside the government's headquarters. They claim that the government has failed to regulate unlicensed taxis, which is damaging their livelihood. Around 40 taxis also staged a slow drive protest around the government headquarters, passing through Gloucester Road. Fleming Road and Harbour Road. While the taxis went on with the slow drive protest, dozens more stayed of the government headquarters <coughs> occupying trains of Tim Avenue. The cabbies demanded to see Transport Chief Frank Chen next Tuesday 
but the government made no promise the meeting would take place. They need to agree to hold a meeting with us. We will have further action if the government does not give us a proper response to this. The drivers threatened to paralyze Central with thousands of taxis unless the government addresses their demands. One lawmaker thinks there's still a way for taxis and Uber to coexist. In Singapore, I just tried uh, over three weeks ago. Uh, when I open up the Uber app, you can actually use the Uber app to call a taxi. So it's sort of like integrated each other as well. Tim foresees even more sharing companies in Hong Kong in the future and demanded policy updates to avoid a deeper rift between the ride sharing sector and the taxi industry. The 19-year-old who admitted to murdering his girlfriend in Taiwan appeared in court today for theft-related charges. Cheng Tong Kai was at the Kuntong Law Court to face two counts of theft and one count of handling stolen goods. The self-claimed student reportedly withdrew over $18,000 using his girlfriend's ATM card last month and kept her phone, camera and Taiwanese dollars. He did not apply for bail and remains in custody. Police arrested the suspected murderer on Tuesday. It's after his girlfriend was reported missing after they traveled to Taiwan last month. Her body was found earlier this week in New Taipei City. Turning overseas now, British Prime Minister Theresa May has ordered the expulsion of 23 Russian diplomats in reaction to the poisoning of a former Russian spy in the UK. As Alan Bognier reports, Russia threatened to do the same. Theresa May told the British Parliament the diplomats being expelled have been identified as undeclared intelligence officers. Through these expulsions, we will fundamentally degrade Russian intelligence capability in the UK for years to come. And if they seek to rebuild it, we will prevent them from doing so. May spoke after the Kremlin ignored a midnight deadline to explain how a nerve agent developed by the Soviet Union was used against Sergei Skripal, a Russian ex-agent convicted of spying for Britain, and his daughter Yulia. They remain in critical condition after being found unconscious March 4. But in the aftermath of this appalling act against our country, this relationship cannot be the same. So we will suspend all planned high-level bilateral contacts between the United Kingdom and the Russian Federation. May added no cabinet ministers or members of the royal family would attend this summer's World Cup in Russia. She also promised both open and covert action against the Kremlin. Moscow has been insisting on being given a sample of the nerve agent. The foreign ministry called May's action unprecedented crude provocation. Britain called an emergency session of the UN Security Council, where it found strong support from the United States. This is a defining moment. Time and time again, member states say they oppose the use of chemical weapons under any circumstance. Now one member stands accused of using chemical weapons the sovereign soil of another member. The credibility of this council will not survive if we fail to hold Russia accountable. In Europe, the foreign ministers of France and Germany threw their full support behind Britain's measures. Some Russia experts say they doubt expelling some diplomats will change President Vladimir Putin's behavior. They note May did not expel the Russian ambassador or sanction any individuals or companies. Alan from the FTVB News. Students across America walked out of schools in a massive movement aimed at combating gun violence. Sonia Otero reports. Students formed the nation's capital to join other students from more than 3,500 schools throughout all 50 states. Their power in numbers created a powerful display of determination. They used the historic walkout to drive lawmakers to enact stricter gun laws. Students sat with their backs to the White House for 17 minutes of silence. It's their way of commemorating the 17 victims of the most recent school shooting massacre in Florida. No more silence and gun violence! Then they marched to the U.S. Capitol building where lawmakers supported their rally there. Don't give up the fight! We will win! If you can
can protect guns this much and don't have the same regard for the people who are going to create your country in the future, then we're in trouble. I know in the end that we will beat the NRA, that we will kick out members of Congress who don't listen to you. A massive walkout was also exercised in Florida, where a month ago, 17 people were shot to death. That's where survivors insist the AR-15 assault rifle used in the massacre should be banned altogether. We're strong and we need to make a change, so we're not going to stop till it happens. Students also use their voices in Minnesota. Enough is enough. We are done with being shot. In Georgia. We will not wait for another mass shooting before we fight for change. In New York. In San Francisco. Today, we take aim at the NRA and at the inaction of our government for finally cold, dead metal over their sons and daughters' lives. <laughs> And in Colorado, where the 1999 massacre at Columbine High School took place. This comes as the FBI publicly admitted that despite serious complaints against the Florida shooter, it did nothing to stop him. The FBI could have and should have done more to investigate the information that was provided prior to the shooting. Sonia Artero, TVB News. Political chaos hit Slovakia and Slovenia, where both prime ministers have resigned. Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico quit in the wake of public protests by the unsolved murder of a journalist and his fiancée. The journalist had outed corrupt businessmen with political ties. In Slovenia, Prime Minister Miro Serra resigned just hours after the Supreme Court announced a referendum on a railway project. Serra admitted he's had enough of being pressured by coalition partners and trade unions over that deal. And back locally, the Consumer Council tested a variety of cleaning aids and discovered more than half contain preservatives that can irritate your skin. Christy Lung tells us more. This detergent comes with a natural formula. This one's labeled as hand moisturizing. As appealing as the products may sound, they are not without faults. Also, 35 detergents tested. The Consumer Council, 21 of them, contained preservatives that can cause health problems. Those preservatives can cause allergic reactions and even lead to hand dermatitis. Some 60% of the samples were also found without a clear list of the ingredients used. The manufacturers should be more transparent, should be more responsible for labeling all these kind of uh, ingredients for the uh, information of the users. These six brands claim they can be used to clean fruits and vegetables. But these contain preservatives which can cause allergies. Some brands also claim to be environmentally friendly and boast of certification overseas, such as in the United States. Still, the council asked consumers to remain alert. The samples were also tested on how well they cleaned. About one-third of the samples achieved better results. Products with concentrated and ultra-concentrated formula were able to clean 22 dishes with every 4 millimeters of detergent used. Products with higher amounts of surfactants in them tended to perform better when it came to cleaning. The problem is, surfactants can also cause skin irritation. That's why the watchdog reminded consumers to wash their hands thoroughly after using these products. Crystalline, TVB News. The sports Hong Kong, the sports streaming arm of Le Eco, took to social media to say it closed down tonight. As Caleb Lung reports, customers who signed up for services are already complaining. Business as usual for the Sports HK staff. At least that's how it looked like outside its Chunwan office. There are rumors the company will close its doors tonight. This came after two overseas companies filed a bankruptcy petition on Tuesday against the Sports HK. Sources say the Sports HK staff have already been notified that the company will shut down. 
Local sports commentator Choi Ka Lok refused to talk about the company's situation further. On the company's web, it's no longer possible to purchase a new membership. However, its social media page was still being updated. A page moderator talked about working at the company for the last time. The Consumer Council has so far received at least 30 complaints from the Sports HK subscribers. It has tried to contact the company, but without success. Uh, we believe, you know, uh, the consumer right now, you know, is very important to uh, extract, you know, the, 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 the documents, you know, related to the contracts. Um, and the transaction, you know, details so that, you know, they can uh, have it ready, you know, for any uh, redress that they could possibly seek. The eco-founder Jia Yueting, who is the United States, was ordered by mainland authorities to return to China to deal with his company's financial woes. Caleb Leung, TVB News. Macau's boundary crossing area of the Hong Kong Juha Macau Bridge is now officially in the enclave's jurisdiction. Macau's chief executive, Fernando Choi, inspected the bridge this morning. Guangdong's border pro handed over a model of the bridge, symbolizing the handover of jurisdiction. The area officially came under Macau's jurisdiction at midnight. To sports and the NBA, the Sacramento Kings rallied past the Miami Heat in an overtime thriller. Jeff Tang has the action. The Heat were the early aggressors with Wayne Ellington coming off the bench to score 22. Buddy Heald came off the Kings bench to push the host ahead. It would be big down the stretch. Front Dragic had a huge game for Miami, but Sacramento led 59-52 at the half. Third quarter action, Zach Randolph showed up for the Kings. Willie Cauley Stein and the Aaron Fox each had highlight dunks as Sacramento led by as many as 12. The fourth quarter became a no holds barred three point shootout. He was straight with the Kings up by 13. Then Dragic reeled off the 11 straight points for a game high 33 as Miami retook the lead with under four minutes. But he was done as he dropped in a game high 24. Then Fox forced overtime. And the home fans loved him for it. Zebo scored the Kings' first three points as they went on to close out the Heat 123 to 119. But they're already out of playoff contention, while Miami are still safely eighth in the East. Jack Tank, TVB News. Building owners are responsible for managing the common parts of a building. Owners should attend meetings of the owner's corporation and vote on major issues in person to safeguard their own interests. Check of tomorrow's weather. While tomorrow's weather will start out with coastal fog, the experts say it will end with many fine conditions. Temperatures between 21 and 26 degrees. And that's the news box for watching.
百年红毛传承国药经典。